How's it going my friends? So in this video we're going to take this uh, spoke shave, very cheap $10 spoke shave and uh, we're gonna convert it to a Japanese style uh, pool plane and uh, so yeah, so I hope you enjoy this one. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so this is the spoke shave we're gonna use to take the parts from and so yeah, they're just Disassemble it. Okay, so for some reason I marked the angle for which the the iron will go in at uh, 30 degrees and I don't know why I did that, I just had 30 degrees in mind. So I remarked it at 45 and yeah, I just will continue from that. Okay, so now we're at uh, this point where I cleaned up uh, the surfaces slightly. Uh, there's a little bit more um, like things to do, but uh, just for the fit up, I think it looks pretty awesome. It's very tight. I think it might be a bit too tight, but at this point, I want to move on uh, the mechanism itself. And since I'm converting this spoke shave. So I want to also uh, keep those uh, adjustment wheels, which I think will be uh, nice and handy and convenient. Not very traditional, but whatever. Um, the, prob the only problem is, is that they don't go all the way down. So I need to make a slot for them so they can lower the blade uh, all the way to the bottom. And uh, so I'm just gonna make a yeah, just a slot here, uh, just a square one, I think.
Okay, so at this point I have most of the plane um, ready to go. Um, what I will do, I don't think for this screw, I don't think I need to glue it in or anything. It's very secure and uh, screwing action, yeah, just make it even tighter, I think, maybe. I need to, I need to make the calculation <laughs> or the... And yeah, and I think after that, it will be uh, somewhat of a plane. And uh, just need to finish it up. And I also want to make some decorations on it. Not that it needs any. But as you all know, decoration makes all tools work far better. Anyway, let's do that then. Okay, so I've got my finish here, and uh, as you can see, the the pigeon in the middle is slightly different from the rest of the wood. Obviously, since it came out from a different piece of wood, uh, I uh, hope that the shellac will kind of uh, blend everything together a little bit better. But uh, I don't think it's super important. I think actually it uh, might even add some stuff. Um, so I'm gonna. Put shellac on most of everything except the place, except the sole and the places where the blade is gonna go. I might just put uh, in some areas like these and maybe here, but I'm not sure yet. I will do this later because I need to adjust it some more when I do the whole setup and everything like that. So let's uh, let's do it, I guess. So while I was uh, getting ready to finish and set up the plane, I was watching some videos from David Ball where he shows how to to make uh, Japanese woodblock prints. And I just saw the the incredible craftsmanship that they they have and and the abilities of or the precision and accuracies that they use for the carving. And I looked at my design and I was like, okay, this. It's not, I don't expect to be in the same uh, ballpark even uh, as those craftsmen and uh, I don't expect to be as uh, skillful at carving overnight, but I was just thinking, no, I got to do better. And so I've decided that I'm going to scratch the, the complete design and start all over uh, with the carving. And so therefore I've decided that I'm going to chisel away all the, the hard work, the hours and the days, but but I was quite motivated to do even better and to try to make it uh, up to a higher standard.
So I won't bore you with showing uh, the whole process all over again, but I will just do a quick uh, go through the process of the new design and the, the new carvings. So as you can clearly see, I took a lot of inspiration from the artist uh, Hoxai uh, that designed the, the print, uh, The Great Wave. And uh, so I hope I don't do too much injustice for his uh, great uh, legacy and work. So once again, uh, we'll do a first coat of shellac uh, and see how, uh, how the grain looks after that. Uh, so I have the shellac thin down slightly and uh, I'm trying to go slowly but also pretty quickly if it makes it makes no sense but whatever we'll see I really didn't know when to when to finish this project, and I decided that I will make another uh, cartouche. I think I think it's called the cart. I don't remember. I, it, it's just the word that ha I had in my mind. Uh, I think the signature or something like that. I've decided to uh, inlay a small plate where I would engrave my logo, which is the pigeon. Now I've got to admit after hours and hours and hours and days even of uh, trying to carve in wood and trying to struggle against, like trying to figure out how to carve, how to use the knife, how, what angles or whatever, going back to the engraving was such uh, in a way relieving experience because all of a sudden I felt like I had some muscle memory and I could just do it almost blindly, not that I'm... Uh, not not to say that I'm a super engraver or anything like that. I make uh, I make mistakes all the time, and my lines are not accurate, or I don't know, I'm scratching the surface or whatnot. But but the contrast for me was just crazy. What's left for us is to set up the plane and uh, I'm gonna do that with some sandpaper and a flat surface and just initialize uh, to see how flat it is to begin with. Not very much, I guess. So as far as I understand it, uh, a Japanese plane needs to have a hollow in some areas. And so the places that need to actually touch the wood is the area here. Here and here. Okay, so everything is uh, just okay. about done and I'm going to assemble all the parts together. Uh, there's one part that you see in this picture where I didn't show how I made it, which is the chip breaker. Uh, I didn't think it was very interesting to show. It's a simple piece of metal that I cut into the shape, put a hole in the middle and that's about that. Uh, I slightly beveled it and and yeah, that's that's all there is to it. Alright, so we'll try to do a nice thin shavings, but I don't think I will do super crazy, you know, few microns thin as the competitions go, I suppose, but uh, yeah, let's just uh, try it out, so I'm loosening, 
loosening the cap a little bit and advance the blade till I can kind of see it, maybe. Yeah, that's a nice one. It's not amazing. I think I'm satisfied with this thickness. I don't think I can make make it look all silky smooth and and that, but I don't know. It's pretty good. It works. Uh, it works pretty well. All right, my friends. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this, and I was quite terrified to challenge myself and try to make such a thing since if it doesn't make semi good shavings I don't think I could have shown it on the internet but it does produce a pretty decent one I think yeah. I mean they're not, they're not they're not they don't look like those you know silky ones that they like just like whoo, flow uh, I think it does a pretty good job I will try probably spend Many, many more hours trying to set up uh, this thing really, really nice. Uh, the other thing, I really need to get some proper sharpening stones because um, I work with these diamond plates here. As, but as you can see, they're super thin, so I, th I think I thought like in the beginning I would just glue them to a block of wood, but they were just so cheap that uh, it really shows. And so I either would get a water stone or, um, or yeah, a thick, more expensive diamond plate and do proper sharpening with this. I managed to get to somewhat okay sharpening, but not, not something to, to really talk about. Um, other than that, the carving was way more difficult than I thought, and that's why I felt like I had to start all over and do this again. Um, Unfortunately, I'm not as, I don't know if it comes as a surprise or not, but I'm, not, <laughs> I'm very not delicate with, with small stuff. So, um, so this was very, very difficult for me. I don't, I really don't understand how they do it like super nicely and all that. Uh, and then it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's not very clean. It's not, uh, but, it, but it looks nice. It's, I think for my first type of carving it looks uh, pretty decent and nice uh, and so yeah but it really taught me a lot of to put extra patience and to try to be to do things more perfectly and more uh, like accurately the first time and uh, uh, so yeah again uh, I really hope you like it and one other thing is uh, that I want to say um, and it might be a little bit late now, but uh, during the last uh, video that I recorded, the one with, when I made the belt buckle, the channel hit uh, 1,000 subscribers, and which is incredible. It's really, really awesome. Uh, and so I thought it would be nice to say just to quickly uh, thank you very much for uh, like super great support. Really, so, like what I wanted to say is that I didn't expect such a great support, and it really is fantastic. Uh, the comments are great, the tips, the questions, uh, just very well welcoming uh, environment and so I'm very happy and pleased and, and I couldn't be happy, happier uh, waking up and uh, starting work, to work on these projects. Uh, and yeah, so thanks again and uh, thank you for staying this long in the video. And uh, yeah, 
uh, I will see you in the next uh, project. And uh, yeah, and uh, like it if you like it and share it if you feel like it and we'll see you again real soon. Look at this, it's all so fluffy. I would feel, ooh, there's a pencil. I want to sleep on it. It's really nice. All right.